The movie begins with the typical festive activities of the Christmas season. Christmas lights and trees adorn every corner, creating the mood for the season. The air is filled with snow, and one can feel the joy of Christmas everywhere. Abby is seen putting the finishing touches on a beautifully decorated Christmas tree in the shop. Caroline Sinclair lovingly chides Abby on how her decorative skills are being wasted when she can showcase her talent as a professional interior decorator. Abby brushes this off, explaining that decorating is only a hobby for her, and also expresses her love for her job at Shady Grove, which is a retirement home. Caroline is undeterred by this and continues to persuade Abby to see things her way. Although having Abby in the shop is a blessing, she wants more for her friend. She mentions an offer of a full-time interior decorator, and this piques Abby's curiosity. Apparently Caroline's son, Nick, was impressed by the design Abby did on Caroline's colonial home and wants to hire her as the interior designer for the Sinclair estate. Although Abby is flattered by the prestigious offer, she is hesitant to accept the job. Caroline insists she at least accepts a meeting in order to discuss the opportunity before making a decision. Abby promises to think about this and then leaves the shop. While walking down the street, enjoying the view of Christmas decorations and the joy of the people gathered for the Christmas tree ceremony, a man absent-mindedly pressing his phone suddenly bumps into her making her lose her balance and fall to the ground. Feeling bad and sorry about this, he apologizes profusely and fusses over Abby, but she assures him she's fine and laughs it off. He remarks on how everything is closed down on a working day. Abby is taken aback, as everyone in Richmond knows that the Christmas tree celebration is a tradition that shuts the city down for the evening. He doesn't seem to see what's so special about plugging in a tree full of lights for people to be so excited, but Abby disagrees and insists he stays for the celebration to experience its magic, hoping it will change his view. Sadly, he remains unconvinced, saying he doesn't believe in magic. He tells her it was nice meeting her and walks away. Abby feels somewhat unsettled at the encounter. After all, who wouldn't be charmed by the allure of Christmas, right? Just then she sees her dad, Philip Fuller, and her son, Max, walking towards her. The little boy calls out and rushes into her outstretched arms with so much joy. Philip asks about the man she was talking to, but she nonchalantly says, it's someone who needed a little Christmas cheer, whispering under her breath that he could pass for a Grinch. Max, excited about the celebration, tries to know when the ceremony will start, and right on cue, the choristers begin singing a rendition of Silent Night, making him run forward to get a better view. She takes a walk with Philip and he instantly senses she's holding back something. She reveals the offer from Caroline and he's genuinely happy for her. He sees it as a fantastic opportunity to restart her design career. She has mixed feelings about this, saying she already has a career she's comfortable with, which gives her time for her son, so she sees no reason to give it up. She explains how important it is for her to be there for Max, attending all his school activities, just like he and her mother were there for her. He encourages her to at least attend the meeting, reassuring her that he will always be there for Max as his grandfather and also support her if she feels overwhelmed by designing. She finally agrees and praises him for being the best dad in the world. As the Christmas tree lights up at the end of the countdown, everyone shares in the happiness of the moment. Back in Shady Grove, Caroline gets bombarded with questions about her job offer from a couple of elderly residents. Being a little bit pessimistic, she says she might not even get the job, but is immediately rebuked by Dolores, an elderly woman. She tells her to go for the meeting with confidence, assuring her that Nick will be lucky to hire her. Meanwhile, an elderly man stylishly tries to set her up with his grandson, Dr. Mike, who walks in just then. He suggests they go for a coffee date, but Abby politely declines, explaining that she has a five-year-old at home waiting to build a gingerbread house with her. At home, she asks Max if he'll be okay with spending more time with his grandfather every day from school if she gets the job she told him about. He affirms that he likes his grandfather's house and obviously has no issues with it. She comforts him, making a promise that she will always be there for him. The next day at Sinclair Estate, Caroline reminds Nick about the interview for the interior designer, but he tells her that he doesn't need to be present, as Kate, who works with them, will handle it. She tries to tell him how important it is for him to conduct the interview since it's for their family estate, but he reassures her they will both have the final decision. Just then, the doorbell rings, and Nick goes to answer it. He is surprised to see Abby, the woman he bumped into the previous night. Abby is equally surprised, and introduces herself as the designer. He introduces himself as Nick Sinclair. Caroline welcomes Abby in and gives her a tour of the house. She introduces Abby to Kate, the senior vice president of Sinclair Enterprise, and Abby expresses her excitement about working together with Kate to bring the estate back to its full potential. 
Nick joins them and offers to take things from there. Caroline happily heads to the kitchen, leaving the two together with Kate. He begins the interview by asking Abby about her background. She tells them about her degree in interior design and working experience with a designer named Tucker. Kate, who recognizes the name, enthusiastically mentions that she grew up with Tucker and asks for a reference. Abby hesitates slightly before affirming that she will get a reference from Tucker, even though it's been a while since she worked with her. She explains that she took a break from design when she had her son, and nervously adds that Caroline's house is her first project after returning. Nick explains that the enterprise is expanding, hence the need for design. She brings out some of her design ideas for the estate, and suggests incorporating a touch of Christmas. However, Nick still remains indifferent to the Christmas theme. Kate tells her she'll need to coordinate with the event planner for the children's hospital fundraiser they are hosting, which basically means all the work on the first floor has to be done before the party. Abby is flustered to find out the due date is on Christmas Eve, which is sooner than expected, being just four weeks away. Kate inquires about the size of her team, but Abby replies, she's a one-man team, though she has an assistant. Kate is a bit surprised by this, but quickly hides her reaction. She asks if Abby has a cosmetic contractor for the work on the first floor. Abby assures she does, but stutters a bit when asked if she has a contractor for landscaping. She awkwardly assures them that she'll find someone for that. With a slight shift in the atmosphere, Kate tells her they will contact her if they have any further questions, signaling the interview is over. Abby fidgets with the design plans they never looked at, and stands to leave. Before leaving, she tells Nick she knows she didn't have a chance at the job, but he disagrees. She accuses him of granting her a pity interview only because it was his mother who wanted to hire her, not him. He offers an apology, and this angers her further as she bursts into a tirade, expressing her pent-up frustration over the effort she put into preparing for the interview, even leaving her son behind. She goes on to say that Nick's grandfather started the company as a clerk, and wouldn't have been able to if he was overlooked instead of given a chance to showcase his talent. Swinging her bag over her shoulders, she declares she would have done a great job if given the opportunity, and storms off. Just before she gets to the door, Nick chases after her and hires her on the spot. He compliments her vision and her spark, which takes her by surprise. She utters her thanks, and he adds that he believes she'll get the job done even if it takes a Christmas miracle. This puts a big smile on her face as she leaves. At Philip's house, she shares the good news. Max suggests they all make the Christmas ornaments together, but Philip tells him it will be just the both of them doing it this time. She disagrees, insisting she'll always find time to spend with him no matter what. She is stunned immediately when she realizes that they are doing 200 pieces. It's definitely going to be a long night for her. But she'd do anything for her son, right? The next morning, she's sleeping at the table when Philip walks in. She wakes up with a start as he drops a cup of coffee on the table. He asks if she's ready for her first day, and it takes her brain a moment to process the question before she finally responds. She quickly packs her bag, puts on her overcoat, and rushes to leave but not before grabbing the coffee he brought her. When Abby arrives at the estate, her hands are full, and she struggles with the door just before Kate comes to help out. Despite Kate's somewhat stiff attitude towards Abby, she shows her the workspace. Abby, who doesn't really notice the coldness, because she's impressed by the large space, excitedly starts talking about her design ideas. She only becomes self-conscious when she realizes Kate's demeanor. Kate stiffly instructs her to keep her informed about any decision she makes. Abby asks if she should get a separate holiday budget, or include the decorations with the estimate for the job. This leaves Kate a bit puzzled, so Abby clarifies, assuming they would want the place more festive since the fundraiser is on Christmas Eve. Kate responds that she will create a budget and inform the event planner. She casually adds that Abby should try not to disturb her and Nick in their temporary office. Feeling unsettled by Kate's behavior, Abby asks when she'll be able to see Mr. Sinclair to discuss the designs. Kate brushes her off, telling her Nick is busy and all questions should be directed to her. This puts Abby in a difficult spot, as it will be harder to create the designs without his input. While scouring decorations, Abby realizes Nick is now in the office and goes to meet him to set a schedule in order to go over the designs. He gives her three and a half minutes before his next call, and she asks him about his personal preferences. She doesn't really get much from him before his call comes in and disappointedly walks out of the office. She goes to meet Max, who is volunteering with Philip to decorate for the Christmas play, and runs into Mike. He apologizes for his grandfather's brazenness, and offers to take her out during her free time before he leaves. She then sees Philip and tells him about the difficulties she's facing with the Sinclair estate design, and Nick's unavailability. 
She opens up about how she can't get a feel of how the estate should be, ever since she met Nick, despite having multiple design plans. He inadvertently gives her an idea about using Christmas decorations on the stiff estate. Back at the estate, Nick notices Abby hanging up some old Christmas decorations she got from Caroline. A particular piece he made as a child catches his eye, and he begins to reminisce about it. She smiles and observes how soft he becomes whenever he talks about his family, but he doesn't agree with this. She tries to cajole him into sparing some of his time to check out designs with him, but he doesn't seem forthcoming and gets a phone call just then. Kate is displeased with the Christmas decorations Abby has done, and suggests she steps down from the job, as she doesn't have the ability to deliver a good design since she hasn't designed it in a long time. Later that night, Abby vents to her dad on the phone about Kate and how difficult the job is becoming. Meanwhile, Nick overhears her conversation. The next day, while moving the old furniture out of the house, she introduces her personal assistant, Desiree Squires, to Nick. She suggests they donate the furniture to charity for Christmas, and Nick agrees. Surprisingly, Nick offers to follow her shopping for new furniture. Taken aback by this turn of events, she expresses her surprise and wonders about his sudden change of heart. They share a cup of hot cocoa before looking at the items. He doesn't share her enthusiasm about the items in the shop as they walk through. She dramatically makes a big deal about a joke he makes and declares it a Christmas miracle. Pleased with their progress and how she's getting to know his preferences, she excitedly talks on and on which makes him smile at her in amazement. She shows him a dining table set that looks amazing on the estate and would serve many Christmases to come, but he has mixed feelings about it. Standing close to him, she expresses her gratitude about being able to pick out the important pieces of his life, and this vulnerable moment moves him to get to the table. Just then, someone points out how they are standing directly under the mistletoe like a couple. While walking to the car, he gives her an offer to work with the event planner, even doubling her budget, but she's not sure about this, as she already has so much on her plate, but he persists, and she finally gives in. Just then, a group begins singing a choir rendition of Joy to the World. This makes him reminisce about a Christmas he spent with his dad, and the memory warms him up. He drops her back at Philip's house and encounters her son, Max. They both introduce themselves, and Nick is charmed by Max. He makes another joke, and Abby doesn't fail to miss it. Back at the estate, Kate expresses her displeasure with the time he spent shopping with Abby, telling him to put the launch which is nearby, as a priority. She tells him he should have hired a real firm for the decorations and not someone who is hung over Christmas. She tries to recruit a firm to take over the decorations, but Nick refuses, telling her he likes the Christmas decorations. Abby receives a delivery and discovers it's from Nick. Surprisingly, he gifted her the nutcracker she admired back at the shop. This leaves a warm feeling in her heart. The next morning, she's at Shady Grove with Max, making Christmas cookies and pastries with others. Mike arrives with his niece and compliments the gingerbread she's made. Just then, Nick enters, much to her surprise. He asks to steal her away for a moment to discuss the gala plans with the event coordinator, Walter Fairbanks. With a great reluctance to leave her son, she finally agrees, and they find somewhere to sit in order to discuss. Afterward, Abby goes back to making gingerbread with Max, and Nick joins her. He uneasily watches Abby and Mike share a playful moment and decides to leave rather abruptly. He feels somewhat jealous upon seeing them together. Back in the estate, Kate inquires about his weekend, and he fills her in. He asks if she has ever made gingerbread, and as expected, Kate has not. He hears a sound from the storage space upstairs and hurriedly goes to check it out. Turns out Abby was trying to get a decoration box and tripped. He helps her up and directs her to the boathouse, where most of the items are kept. She thanks him for the nutcracker he gifted her, calling the gesture kind and considerate while blushing. He offers to take her to the boathouse. While in the boathouse, the snow makes her reminisce about the last Christmas she had before her mother passed away, because that was the last time it snowed on Christmas Eve. She tells him how the snow made Christmas special for her at the time, and she has been hoping it snows on Christmas Eve since then. He lightly tells her he hopes it snows for her sake, and also hopes it doesn't for the sake of the gala. That's another joke from the rigid Mr. Sinclair right there. The Christmas items in the storage make him remember some of his childhood moments, and they share an electrifying moment as they lock eyes and almost kiss. Just then, he gets a ping from his phone, which jolts them back to reality. He leaves to continue working but not before giving her his jacket to comfort her against the cold. Abby confides in Philip about the moment she had with Nick and expresses her confusion about the different sides of Nick. He advises her to be with someone who makes her laugh and tells her not to shut her emotions off. This propels her into getting a dinner date with Mike. Not what we expected though. 
Back at the estate, she and Desiree work on hanging Christmas decorations. Abby is eager to get to Max's Christmas pageant rehearsal that evening, and tries to finish quickly. As the snow begins to fall heavily, she tells Desiree to go ahead so she doesn't get stuck with the snow coming down. Mike comes in, and notices her distress about finishing the design in time for Max's rehearsal. He offers to help, taking off his suit jacket. She steals glances at him, as she has never seen him out of a suit. She offers her thanks for helping her finish on time, and they share a small romantic moment, lost in each other's eyes yet again. Remembering the rehearsal, she says she must leave, and he offers her a ride. Upon arriving at the rehearsal, Abby invites him to stay, but he politely declines, saying he has work waiting for him. The next day, she and Walter are discussing some decoration plans for the walkway, when Desiree casually mentions that Abby has a date later that evening. Walter mildly criticizes the dress Abby is wearing for the date, and Desiree saves the day by giving her a more suitable date outfit. Nick learns about Abby's date from Walter, and doesn't seem pleased by this. He suggests to Kate that they should celebrate the news she got about the merger with Bob McManus. Turns out he wants to go to the same restaurant Abby went for her date. Kate sees Abby upon their arrival, and Nick steers them to her table. Mike offers for them to join him and Abby, which creates an awkward moment as Abby and Kate don't think it's a good idea. Nick willingly accepts this offer though. Kate invites Mike to the gala, and he accepts, expressing his interest in Abby's design. Nick compliments her design skills, sparking another brief between them, which makes things a little bit awkward for Kate and Mike. Back at the estate, Abby brings Max to work with her, and Nick and Caroline fuss over him, much to Kate's irritation. She tries to pull Nick away for an audition of the band that will be performing at the gala. Caroline, thinking quickly, gives Kate another task, and suggests Abby and Nick meet with the band instead, while she looks after Max. During the audition a song makes her reminisce about her mother, and this leads them into a dance. They talk about the first time they saw each other and how far they've come since then. So engrossed in each other, that they barely notice when the band stops playing, until a member clears his throat. She hastily leaves to continue her work, and Nick hires the band. Much later he sees Abby and Max heading for the market square, to see Santa Claus, and Max invites him to join them. Kate obviously doesn't like this, but she doesn't have a choice in the matter. Max is thrilled to see Santa Claus, and rushes off to meet him. As they both watch Max, Nick begins to ask her about her Christmas wishes. She shares hers and tries learn about his, but just as he begins to respond, Kate's call comes in with news of an emergency meeting he needs to attend. He apologizes to Abby, and hurriedly leaves. Nick gets frustrated when he discovers that they've almost lost the merger deal with Bob McManus. He solidly makes a decision to only focus on work, promising never to get distracted again. Later that night, Abby goes in to check up on Nick before leaving, but he gives off a cold demeanor. She apologizes and starts to leave, but he calls her back and apologizes for his attitude. He opens up about how the merger is almost falling apart and has resolved to no longer let distractions come into his life because he has the responsibility of his employee's livelihood in his hands. Kate successfully invites Bob McManus to the gala and attempts to celebrate with Nick, but he doesn't really seem happy. The following day, Abby and Desiree review the decorations, and Desiree comments on how perfect Kate and Nick appear together. Abby feels somewhat off about this as she observes them from a distance. Later that night as she prepares to leave she notices Nick standing at the window watching her. Kate comes in at that moment to tell him about a company they could acquire in the near future. Abby turns and leaves dejectedly, while Nick stands there, grappling with his mixed feelings. At the Christmas play, Max delivers a wonderful performance. Philip notices that she's upset, and she admits that despite Mike being the perfect gentleman, she doesn't feel a spark between them. He suggests that her true spark is probably at the Sinclair estate, but she dismisses this. She clarifies that the relationship with Nick is now strictly professional, especially since Nick has been clear about avoiding distractions, which is indirectly her. She's left wondering if there will be any relationship at all between her and Nick after the gala, as she might not even get to see him again. At the estate, Caroline tries to talk to Nick about Abby, but he insists that he needs to keep his priorities straight. She expresses concern for his happiness, and suggests that he might have his priorities wrong. Feeling uncomfortable with the conversation, he abruptly gives a work excuse and leaves. On the day of the gala, Nick is deeply impressed with the decorations and praises Abby. She smiles and explains that she wants to transform the house into a warm home, just as his father would have wanted it. Nick is happy to see some old items from his childhood, and is overwhelmed that she remembered to put them in his office decorations. He thanks her, and there is a little electrifying pull between them. 
This moment gets interrupted when Kate suddenly enters the office, reminding Nick of a meeting with a client. She unexpectedly compliments Abby on the design before leaving. Mike and Abby arrive at the gala together, and Mike is amazed by how beautiful the venue looks. The Christmas decorations and lights illuminate the place, creating a magical atmosphere. The guests mingle in various clusters and are all in synchrony with the Christmas moment. Desiree approaches Abby and excitedly tells her about the numerous compliments she has been getting as the designer and even potential job offers. Mike heads off to get champagne to celebrate the moment. Feeling fulfilled and joyful about this, she decides to make interior decorating her full-time job and recruits Desiree on the spot. One can say that it's been a long time coming for this. Abby thanks Caroline for the opportunity and Caroline tries to set her up with Nick. However, Abby doubts that a relationship will work out in the future. Nick steps in, and Carolyn leaves to give them time together. He compliments her designs once more, and also doesn't fail to compliment her appearance. While blushing, she tells him he looks beautiful too, before stuttering to correct herself by saying she means handsome. He tries to ask her for a dance but suddenly gets interrupted by Bob McManus. He begrudgingly leaves to discuss business. It turns out that the deal is back on, which makes Kate happy as they disperse to enjoy the party. Max runs up to Nick for a friendly chat before he darts off to explore something else at the party. Nick then notices Abby and Mike dancing, and this visibly dampens his mood. Mike, who realizes they are being watched by Nick, opens up to Abby, acknowledging that he never really had a chance with her. This is obvious because almost everyone can feel the romantic tension between Abby and Nick. She doesn't dispute this and apologizes to Mike. Kate, being someone who goes for what she wants, tells Walter she has a proposal for Mike and hopes it will change his life. As Abby walks by, Kate stops her to ask for Nick's location and heads off. Walter tells Abby he might have to plan a wedding soon, mentioning the proposal Kate said she has for Nick. Abby is taken aback by this and it leaves a sad feeling. Meanwhile, back in the office, Kate proposes that Nick makes her the CFO. She explains that this will allow her to expand the company and not just keep up with his father's expectations. Also, doing that would give him the time to build a life with Abby. He promotes her right away, as he realizes that it's what he wants and thanks her, then proceeds to find Abby. While in search of Abby, Nick sees Philip and inquires about Abby. He's a bit disappointed when he learns that she has gone home with Max. As he rushes to go to her, Philip offers his fatherly advice, suggesting he makes a grand gesture in his approach. Back at home, Abby cuddles Max, probably thinking about Nick. Upon hearing a noise outside, Max rushes to the window and sees Nick standing outside with a couple of violinists playing a romantic tune. She hurriedly steps outside, a bit confused by Nick's presence. He confesses his feelings for her and it leaves her speechless. Despite her obvious feelings for Nick, she expresses her concern about wanting a great partner who would be willing to spend time and be there for her and Max. With so much love in his eyes, he assures her that his view of life has changed and his Christmas wish is to spend the rest of his life with her. Brimming with excitement and love, she rushes into his arms, and they share a passionate kiss under the Christmas lights. Just then, snow begins to fall, bringing a smile to Abby's face as she realizes she's gotten everything she ever wanted for Christmas. The most magical moment indeed.